Hello and welcome back. Um, GPS disciplined oscillator. Uh, we have one here. I will zoom in on it later. Uh, why we need it? Uh, why is the, the, the standard time base in your device not good enough? Well, let me explain why. Over the years, uh, time uh, bases have been uh, improved uh, little by little, and until now we have really, really nice uh, stuff available. Uh, I remember my old frequency counter I built myself um, 25, 30 years ago. It has this uh, quartz crystal. As you can see, it's also 10 megahertz. Uh, if you look at it here, it is in my old <laughs> frequency counter. It still works, by the way, and it works on 8 megahertz and not on 10. But in that time, you just built what you. Um, but as you see, it, uh, uh, the crystal needs uh, an oscillator. It doesn't oscillate by himself. It just helps the oscillator to be more or less in the frequency you want it to be. And uh, you have here this uh, capacitor trimmer. And then you uh, put it on the correct frequency. So that means you need another device to, to calibrate it. And it, it, it works fine. I, I calibrate it uh, once a month if I want to be sure it works correct. Because uh, the, these uh, quartz crystals, they, uh, they age. And uh, that's not the only problem. It's also that uh, uh, they are very temperature sensitive. And probably the whole oscillator, the, the capacitor also, no, the capacitor trimmer. Uh, well, in, in, in this room here, it's not a problem. It's, it's more or less 22 degrees Celsius all the time. Uh, so it's, it's still usable, but uh, it, it ages. And that means that it will be less accurate over time. And so nowadays, uh, they have this little... It is uh, a, a digital, but it's a, a, an active oscillator. So that means there is probably a crystal like that inside. And they did some compensations uh, digitally. And it just gives a very nice uh, 5 volts uh, output. So you can just put it on your TTL circuits and uh, do whatever you want with it. Um, these are good. They age a lot less than the than the than the crystals and you will find them in 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 a lot of uh, machines I, I think you also have these uh, temperature uh, compensated but but mostly they are not uh, for instance the, even this this scope this uh, segment i bought it a few months ago um i i, I checked a, a teardown video from someone else <laughs> because it's still a warranty i'm not going to open this one uh, and it had one of these, but uh, if it's temperature controlled, uh, I don't know. I, I didn't uh, watch that. But these are also temperature controlled available, and they look like this. They are a lot bigger. If you switch them on, they, they get hot or hot, kind of warm, and they, they keep it on the same temperature. So then temperature is not an issue anymore. Uh, but you still have the aging, but these things age uh, a lot less. And you can buy them uh, secondhand uh, if you buy them on, on eBay or AliExpress. Then uh, it's probably from a, a, a telephone, a GSM uh, mobile tower, um, because they replace them every 10 years. And probably it's also changed from T3 to 4G to 5G. So if it even makes the 10 years, I, I'm not sure. But then they get available for, for us uh, and we can build them in, in devices, which is great because these are actually pretty good. And of course, you have different qualities. Uh, you also have the, the bigger one from Tremble. These are also very good. Uh, these uh, age a lot less. Or you can buy on the internet. This is not one, but <laughs> this is this is more or less the size of uh, of a uh, rubidium uh, oscillator, and that is kind of a, yeah a little atomic clock. It it uh, it works with a lamp and a photo cell, and then well, it's a, a lot more complicated. And and those are really really stable. 
Uh, but you need, it, it's more complicated to connect because you need the 15 volt for the lamps and it's taking 1.7 to 2 amps. So it, it does, does take a lot of power and then you need 5 volts for the digital circuit. Uh, this is not one, this is just a power supply. But So if you, if you want to have a very nice uh, a reference, uh, you, you could also think of uh, doing that. But I chose not to do that. I have a GPS disciplined oscillator. And it is here and I will show you a picture because instead of this one, it has the nicer tremble one. And here it is. This is what it looks like uh, from the front. Um, I will carefully turn it. I, I don't want to switch it off because it is online already for uh, a few weeks. So uh, it is uh, already synced very nicely. Uh, what it has, it has a GPS antenna. It has, of course, the 10 MHz output, the power and uh, serial output. So you can, well, you can uh, customize a little bit the display or if you want your uh, IMEA output, you can also have that. Um, as you see, it's not exactly 10 right now. It's still trying to, to get to 10. But if you can see, we are here on 0.999 of a hertz. So we're talking about, about nothing. But uh, how does it work? Well, they, they have this uh, temperature uh, controlled or compensated uh, oscillator, which is already almost uh, spot on. Uh, but they use the GPS uh, signal. They connected that to, uh, to a processor. And the uh, GPS system has very accurate time system. It, is, it, has, its own, uh, it has its own time co controller or it's synced by the atomic clock. So it's super, super precise. So what they do, they just count pulses for an hour and they compare that to the pulses of the, of the oscillator. And if there is a dip difference, they just compensate the oscillator a little bit. So if you just switch it on, it will first be a little bit too high, then a little bit too low, and then slowly over time, it will flatten out and that's what you saw right there that it was not exactly 10 now of course it's exactly 10 0 0 0 0 0 but you saw the 9999 so that means it's still trying to get it flat so now we have this perfect 10 megahertz or near to perfect 10 megahertz what are we gonna do with it well uh, we can of course use it for just to calibrate an old frequency counter like this or just any frequency counter you just put it on the input and you put it uh, on the on the highest k time and then you just start adjusting until it says 10 0 0 0 0 that's what you can do and i will use that for this one but if you have a little bit more advanced uh, frequency counter like this one i have here the, the tti uh, 930 it just has a reference input and what I can do, I just uh, take my 10 megahertz and then it will use that as a reference instead of his own uh, clock that will, because this one is uh, also very good, so it probably has one like this uh, because it's, it's, it's spot on, but of course I want it to be perfect, 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 so that's why I, I have the GPS DO. Uh, and also, of course, the Maconi. The Maconi doesn't use uh, 10 because it's, it's old. <laughs> In that time, they used 1 uh, megahertz as a, as a reference. But uh, I found a nice uh, distribution amplifier. It's uh, from the same uh, Japanese uh, M radio amateur. Uh, he, he designed also the GPSDO, and now you find it uh, almost everywhere. Um, this is not only a distributor, because then, then you can also take a video signal distributor and, uh, and change a little bit the impedance from 75 to 50 and then you're done. But uh, I didn't want to do that. Um, so I, I have here 
uh, as you can see it has different outputs I think I need to <laughs> look yeah this is the 10 this is the 5 and this is the 1 and here I put my input well this one is actually a little bit of a luxury model because it also has its own uh, oscillator but once I connect the uh, 10 megahertz from the GPSDO it will switch off its own oscillator and it will start using the external reference so then I connect uh, the 10 megahertz to the TTI and I will connect my 1 megahertz to the to the Marconi even though the Marconi is also almost spot on I still like to be sure now I'm, I'm, I'm adjusting uh, transmitters receivers you want it to be spot on and even if the temperature change in this room I want it to be good so uh, that's why the GPS uh, DO um, so uh, let's uh, connect let's see if, if, if this internal clock is any good because so okay I have a little setup here with the uh, with the GPS DO now it's uh, 10.0001 so that's uh, accurate enough for me um, I just want to see what the uh, internal oscillator of the distribution uh, amplifier uh, will do because then I have a nice backup if somehow I'm losing the, the satellite which would be very weird but well just just see uh, I did put I will show you down here a little uh, amp meter because then I can see uh, if the oscillator is warm if it's up to temperature it will probably drop um, so uh, I will connect it first but that's not that interesting and it cannot <laughs> put it all in one so uh, uh, let's see uh, what I want to do is to see how accurate the meter is so I will just connect that quickly yeah I will not put something on the input because I want it to, to use its own oscillator connected it to the TTI uh, yeah the display is visible uh, let's see okay it is heating as you can see the output is not 10 yet but so it's using its internal oscillator uh, if you can see it's now doing 356 milliamps so that's 0.3 amps and it will drop when it's hot You can see that the f that the current current is still or three three hundred fifty six, but uh, you see the frequency is almost there. Now it's at ten, so now it will probably shoot up too much first, and then it will go down a bit. Yes, the current is dropping, and the frequency should go down a little bit. So I think that's uh, more or less stabilized. My frequency counter, by the way, was already switched on uh, for a while uh, because they also say in the manual keep it uh, switched on for 20 to 30 minutes. Of course, it also needs to heat, uh, but here it's very nicely visible that now you have the, the thermostat now because uh, the current is uh, slowly dropping so okay so I'm, I'm actually uh, a little bit surprised <laughs> that uh, it is uh, kind of good let me see if I can uh, add a few zeros okay this is a perfect uh, 10 let's put them on 10 seconds see what happens there well if you okay, yeah 
Well, this is a kind of <laughs> spot on. And then um, also um, we are comparing this time base to this time base. It's not necessarily that this one is perfect, but at least you get an idea. So now I like to switch over to the GPSDO to see if that one is more accurate. And of course, I like to see the So now it yeah now you can see we have an extra LED switched on so that means we are now running on so now it's just distributing the signal and uh, let's see if it's any better yeah well we're comparing super good to almost perfect so I'm not sure if we can see something here Okay, but if we compare to the same, let's see if this is long enough, maybe if I use two of them, that should be possible. So now we're going to connect the external reference and now we're going to compare with itself. So then it should of course be perfect, but yeah, I need to compare it with something. So if I put on this clock now it's comparing to itself so it would be great if I now see 10 0 0 0 0 and we do and that's why you want a perfect reference in your laboratory so that's it very fast review of the GPS DO uh, what I have seen now is uh, it would make me very happy. First of all, I can calibrate all my uh, other devices that do not have an external reference uh, input or uh, if, uh, if it's running also on uh, 10 MHz, maybe I can create one myself in the device or I just uh, calibrate them. Uh, I can connect it to my Makoni and I can connect it to my CTI then I know always my frequency in the display is really what it is and also I don't need to worry about the aging uh, of the of the oscillator because it will be corrected by my GPS DO so that's it <laughs> thank you for watching hope to see you next time